Rotation matrices can represent three different things. The one is the relative orientation of coordinate frames. So frame one with respect to frame zero. The other one is passive rotation of frame around an object. So static object, rotate the frame. Or active rotation of object in fixed frame. So that means frame is fixed, rotate object. Basic rotation is around a single unit vector or axis. But many basic rotations can multiply to form a complicated one. So you could rotate around X and then around Y and then around Z. And if you multiply all, all those together, you get a final resulting rotation matrix. There are several properties that are associated specifically with rotation matrices. Not every three by three matrix is a rotation matrix because the rotation matrix expresses the orientations, then its determinant has to equal one and it's composed of unit vectors. So one of the property that we already discussed is the inverse. The transpose times the original equals the identity matrix, which is a, a square matrix with ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. The columns of rows are mutually orthogonal, so they're perpendicular and they're unit vectors because it's just the direction of each axis. So because of that, the determinant equals one. Now for associativity, you can multiply multiple rotation matrices together. As long as you keep the order consistent, you end up with the same answer. But order matters, so it's not commutative. So you can't rotate around X and then around Y and get the same answer as if you rotated around Y and then around X. And then finally, the closure property, if two rotation matrices are in special orthogonal group three, which means three dimensional space, then when you multiply them together, the new matrix is also in 3D space. To figure out what order to multiply things in, you have to know if it is current frame or fixed frame. In a current frame, each rotation is relative to the previous frame. So you might rotate around X, and then rotate around the new Y, and then now rotate around the new Z, and each rotation is relative to the one before it. That is post-multiplication. So this is the most common kind. You start with frame one with respect to frame zero, then two with respect to frame one, and then so on. Fixed frame is also possible. So if you kept the frame you were rotating around constant, so you just kept X, Y, Z always the same, but you rotated the object always around the original frame, that is a fixed frame multiplication. So in that case, you would pre-multiply. Here's an example of current frame rotations. Here, we multiply by around original Y by angle phi, and then multiply around the new the current z-axis by angle theta. So r y phi, r z theta, we end up with this blue frame. If we were doing a fixed frame, that would look a little bit different. So we start out just the same, rotating around y by angle phi, but then we rotate around the original z by angle theta, not the new z, the original z. So still multiplying around the black frame, and because of all of this having to do, we, we do the first rotation, then we have to undo it, do the second rotation, redo the first rotation, because this is fixed frame. Then all that stuff, stuff ends up canceling out that first and second Rs, and then you just end up with Rz theta, Ry phi, which is the reverse order of what we did for current frame. So current frame, post multiply the matrices, Fixed frame, pre-multiply the matrices. So now let's do an example. We want to rotate this sequence of rotations. There are two approaches that we can use. So one approach is we can start out with writing the first rotation in the middle and then write every current frame rotation after it and every fixed frame rotation before it. The other way to do it is start at the bottom 
go up doing the fixed rotations. Once you get to the top, go down using the current rotations. So let's look at how this would be and how we get the same answer in both situations. So here we'll solve the rotation sequence using both of the methods. So the first method is to get the final R, we write down the first rotation in the middle, R, Y, angle theta. Then we write each current rotation in a pulse multiplication and each fixed rotation in a pre-multiplication. So to get the current Z, that's pulse multiplication, so R, Z, V, then fixed x by alpha, so fixed goes in front, r x alpha, current y by angle beta, that goes in the back, r y beta, and fixed z by angle delta, fixed goes in the front, r z delta. The other method that we can use is to start at the bottom and go up writing the fixed ones, and then go down writing the current ones. So we'll do that and show that we get the same thing. So R equals, start at the bottom with fixed, R, Z, delta, go up to the next fix, R, X, alpha, go all the way up. Okay, there weren't any more fixed, so now we'll start with current, current Y, theta, Then we go down, the next current is RZ phi. And then the last current is RY beta. So you see that no matter which method we use, we get the same result.